a, a fleet of agents that are doing things for you and potentially earning you money or building you things. Demi's Hassabis, the mastermind behind Google DeepMind, is back at it, casually dropping jaw-dropping predictions like fleets of autonomous AI agents literally earning money for you. Yeah, you heard that right. And while he's been busy building the future, he's also taken a rare moment to hit the interview circuit. And trust me, what he's revealed is nothing short of mind-blowing. We're talking purposeful hallucinations, Darwin-style AI evolution, and Google's true endgame with artificial general intelligence. This isn't just speculation. Demi's just painted the clearest picture yet of where this tech train is headed, and spoiler alert, it's accelerating. Now in this first clip we're diving into, Demi's takes the stage at the Google I.O. keynote. He gets grilled on Alpha Evolve, DeepMind's latest curveball research, and what this could mean for the future of AI. And trust me, this isn't your average next-gen model story. But before we jump in, don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and stay locked in for the hottest drops in AI and tech. All right, roll the clip. If it's going to be the creation of self-improving systems. And last week, I almost fell out of my chair reading this headline about something called Alpha Evolve which is an AI that helps design better algorithms and even improve the way uh, LLMs train. So, Demis, are you trying to cause an intelligence explosion? No, uh, not an uncontrolled one. Um, <laughs> I, look, I, I think we, it's an interesting first experiment. It's an amazing system, We've got a great team that's working on that, where it's interesting now to start pairing other types of techniques, in this case, evolutionary programming techniques, with the latest foundation models, which are getting increasingly powerful. And I actually want to see in our exploratory work a lot more of these kind of combinatorial uh, systems and sort of pairing different approaches together. Uh, and you're right, that is one of the things, a self-improvement, someone discovering a kind of self-improvement loop uh, would be one way where things might accelerate further than they're even going today. Um, so, and, and we've seen it before with our own work, with things like Alpha Zero, you know, learning, chess and go and any two-player game from scratch uh, within you know, less than 24 hours, um, starting from random with self-improving processes. So we know it's possible, but again, um, those are in quite limited game domains, which are very well described. So the real world is far messier and far more complex. So it remains to be seen if that type of um, approach can work in a more general way. So here's the scoop. DeepMind is now fusing those groundbreaking evolutionary training methods from Alpha Evolve into today's large language models. Think Alpha Zero, but with a serious upgrade. If you haven't been living in a cave, you'll remember AlphaGo, the AI that stunned the world by defeating world champion Lee Settle in 2016. But what came next? AlphaGo Zero. And this one didn't just beat its predecessor, it obliterated it in just three days. It taught itself go from scratch by playing millions of games against itself, no human input required, just the rules, a simulation, and an insane amount of self-play. So naturally you're thinking, why not do the same thing with LLMs? Drop M in, let M play, evolve, and boom, super intelligence. Well, not so fast. As Demi's hints in the clip, it's way more complicated than that. Why? Because Go has rules, clear goals, and a win condition. Real life. It's messy, chaotic, and the scoreboard doesn't even exist. There's no win or lose in a world built on nuance, context, and uncertainty. Which brings us to our next clip, Demi's divies into what it might really take to get these self-improving, evolution-driven techniques to work with foundation models. And spoiler, it's tied to something you've probably heard tossed around a lot lately. No, well, we, we've always been big believers in what we're now calling this thinking paradigm. If you go back to our very early work on things like AlphaGo and AlphaZero, our agent work on, on playing games, they will all have this type of attribute of a thinking system on top of a model. And actually, you can quantify how much difference that makes if you look at a game like chess or Go. Um, you, you know, we had versions of AlphaGo and AlphaZero with the thinking turned off, so it was just the model telling you its first idea. And, you know, it's not bad. It's maybe like master level, something like that. But then if you turn the thinking on, it's be way beyond world champion level. You know, it's like a 600 ELO plus difference between the two versions. So you can see that in games, let alone for the real world, which is way more complicated. And um, I think the gains will be potentially even bigger by adding uh, this thinking type of paradigm on top. Of course, the challenge is 
that your models, I and mean, I talked about this earlier in the talk, need to be a kind of world model, and that's much harder than building a model of a simple game, of course. And it, and, uh, you know, it has errors in it, and you know, those can compound over longer-term plans. So, um, but I think we're making really good progress on, on all, that, all those fronts. So. All right, let's talk world models. This is shaping up to be the next big frontier in AI. The idea? We've got to teach machines to model the entire world, not just a board game like Go, and not just the structure of language like today's LLMs. We're talking about building an internal simulation of reality itself. And if that sounds familiar, it's because Meta's chief AI scientist, Yan LeCun, has been waving this flag for a while now. He's been saying, pretty loudly, that LLMs alone won't cut it if we're aiming for AGI. What we need is a model that can perceive, reason, and understand. Not just text, but visuals, sound, physical space, and the deep laws that govern everything. Physics, causality, even intuition. In short, we're heading toward hybrid intelligence, a symphony of systems and architectures that work together, like the brains many regions sinking up. Now LeCun's got his own proposal for this, his VGPA architecture. Personally, I'm not totally convinced, yet. For now, let's shift the spotlight back to Google, because the real question is, how close are they to making this AGI dream a reality? Well, buckle up. In this next clip from an entirely different interview, Demi's drops the bombshell. Google is all in on AGI. No more tiptoeing. No more taboo. And get this, he even describes DeepMind as the engine room powering all of Google. Let's check it out. Yeah. One thing that struck me about I.O. this year compared to previous years um, is that it seems like Google is sort of getting AGI pilled, as they say. Um, I remember interviewing people, researchers at Google, even a couple years ago, and um, there was a little taboo about talking about mm. AGI. They would sort of be like, oh, that's like Demis and his deep mind people in <laughs> London. That's sort of like their crazy thing uh, that they're excited about. But here we're doing like, you know, real research. Um, but now you've got like senior Google executives uh, talking openly about it. What explains that shift? I think the, the sort of AI part of the of the equation becoming more and more central. Like I sometimes describe uh, Google DeepMind now as the engine room of Google. And I think you saw that probably in the keynote yesterday, really, if you take a step back. Um, and then it's very clear. Uh, I, I think you could sort of say AGI pilled is maybe the right word, that we're quite close to this uh, human level general intelligence, uh, maybe closer than people thought even a couple of years ago. And it's going to have broad cross-cutting impact. And I think there's another thing that you saw at the keynote, it's sort of literally popping up everywhere because it's this horizontal layer that's going to underpin everything. And I think everyone is starting to understand that. And um, maybe a bit of the deep mind ethos is bleeding into the into the general Google, which is, which is great. Yup, you heard that right. Google is all in. And when you look at what they're packing, it's easy to see why they're ahead of the curve. They've got the full stack, end-to-end -end AI infrastructure, insane levels of compute, oceans of training data, world-class talent, and a direct pipeline from cutting-edge deep mind research straight into real-world Google products. And at the helm, Demi's Hassabis himself, one of the sharpest minds in the game. If there's a company that's going to crack AGI first, it's probably them. But here's the million-dollar question, when? In this next clip, Demi's Dodge is giving an exact timeline but not because he's unsure, no. It's because according to him, all the timelines are short. AGI isn't a distant dream anymore. It's breathing down our necks. Do you feel like you're in sort of the, the final home stretch to AGI? I mean, I'd Sergey Brin, uh, Google's co-founder, had a, a memo that uh, was reported on uh, by my, my colleague at the New York Times earlier this year that went out to Google employees and said, you know, we're in the sort of the home stretch and everyone needs to get back to the office and be working all the time uh, because this, this is when it really matters. Do you have that sense of like uh, of, of finality or, or sort of entering a new phase or an end game? I think we are past the middle game, that's for sure. But I've been working every hour there is for the last 20 years because I felt the, how important and momentous this, this technology would be. And we have thought it was possible for 20 years. And I think it's coming into view now. I agree with that. And um, whether it's five years or 10 years or two years, that they're all actually quite short timelines when you're talking discussing what were the, the enormity of the transformation of this technology you know this technology is going to bring uh that none of those timelines are very long so what does this future actually look like in this final clip demis pulls back the curtain on what might unfold as we inch closer to agi and let me tell you 
It's a wild glimpse into what could be the most transformative moment in human history. Now remember, Demi's Hassabis isn't some tech hype man. He's a literal genius, known for being cautious, grounded, even reserved when it comes to making predictions. So when he says something bold, you listen. And what he says in this clip, it just might blow your mind. Ready, let's dive in. Well, I think we're, we're, we're working on those things. They take time to develop. Um, I think the, a, a kind of universal assistant would be one of those things if it was uh, kind of really yours and working for you effectively. So technology that works for you. Um, I think that this is what economists and other experts should be working on is do you have, uh, does everyone have manager uh, a, a, a suite of, of, you know, fleet of agents that are doing things for you and, you know, including potentially earning you money or building you things? Um, you know, does that become part of the normal job process? I could imagine that in the next four or five years. I also think that as we get closer to AGI and we make breakthroughs and we, we probably talked about last time, material sciences, energy, fusion, these sorts of things helped by AI, um, uh, we should have, we should start getting to a position in society where we're getting towards what I would call radical abundance, where there's a lot of resources uh, to go around. And then again, it's more of a political question of how would you distribute that in a fair way, right? So th I've heard this term like universal high income, what, something like that, uh, I think is going to probably be, you know, good and necessary. But obviously, there's a lot of uh, complications there that need to be thought through. Um, so and, and then in between, there's this transition period, you know, between now and whenever, we, we have a, that sort of situation where what, what do we do about the change in, in, the, in the interim and depends on how long that is too. If Demi's is even half right, we're looking at a future defined by radical abundance. Imagine AI agents that don't just assist us, they build for us, work for us, earn for us. Universal high income, that might not just be an idealistic dream anymore, it could become reality. It sounds incredible if it works, but here's the twist. If Google gets there first, they'll be the ones holding the blueprint for this new world. So the real question becomes, what kind of world will they build? Will these AI agents be our co-workers or our replacements? Are we heading into a golden age of creativity, productivity, and freedom? Or are we racing toward a future where human labor is obsolete and only a few hold the power? I want to know what you think. Do you believe in Demi's vision of radical abundance? Or does it all sound just a little too perfect, maybe even a little dangerous? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read every single one. I genuinely love hearing different takes on this because honestly, I go back and forth myself. Some days I'm pumped, other days terrified. Let's talk about it. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of AI, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And hey, share this with a friend who needs to see what's coming. Until next time, stay curious and stay human.